So it is now the next morning and I have fully top balanced the 12 volt 100 ampere hour battery again. You can see we are at 3.64 volts and we've got 8 millivolt deviation. I would consider this as a full top balanced battery pack now. Okay, let's do the um, second discharge test. Guys, I'm so excited. I haven't used the CKE tester software, the EB tester software for months, I would say. Okay, so here on the right, I have already set the parameters. Uh, we are just doing a full discharge cycle now. So discharging constant current, 20 amps down to 10 volts. I would say we are at 14.5 volts. There we go. The fan turns on. You can see the blue line is our voltage. Red line is current. And well, again, this may take five hours. So see you in the PM. Uh, I actually just realized we are only discharging with six amps because the, um, the CKE tester has a power limit of 85 watts and we have a 12 volt battery. So single cells, it can discharge with up to 20 amps, but a full battery only with 85 watts apparently damn it i need better equipment for these tests uh, it says it will take about 16 hours now to discharge this battery oh that's not good that will be in the middle of the night or we may have another late night shift here in the garage who knows the next day so it is now the next morning obviously and the test has stopped. Uh, this is the BMS of this 100 ampere hour battery now. You can see the BMS has turned off discharging. So we actually reached a cell disconnect. Uh, potentially cell number one is the lowest here. 145 millivolt deviation. So BMS has shut off the whole discharging. Okay, let's have a look inside the software. Okay, screen recording. Is, is it running? Is it running? I can't see it. Okay, so we can see here the beautiful discharge curve of this 12 volt 100 amp hour battery. At the beginning, we've got this steep drop from 14, oh, 14 14.4 volts all the way down to 12.9. So after only 2% of the capacity, we have already reached the nominal voltage. And then we stay fairly flat, fairly flat until this point here let's find the 12 volt mark which is exactly here we have used 94 ampere hours so 94 percent capacity drawn at 12 volt there's no need to go under 12 volt with these batteries because there's almost no capacity left and then we see the steep drop down at the end and here the bms has shut off at 10.1 at 10 volts shortly before the tester would have shut down as well. And we can see a hundred and, oh, we can see it down here anyway. Here, a hundred point four six ampere hours we have drawn. So we have restored the reputation from Shenzhen Basin Technology with this test. It can deliver, um, well, actually not quite because we have only discharged with we have only discharged the battery with 6 amps, which is um, far away from all the test standards of 0.2C. And you know this from lead acid batteries. The slower you discharge your battery, the more capacity you get out. Now, with lithium iron phosphate or lithium batteries in general, this is actually not quite the case because the Pukert factor is almost 1. You, you almost don't have this effect. If you have a look at the graphs here, you can see regardless how much current we pull from these batteries, the rated or the, the achievable capacity is almost the same. There is not much difference between 0.1C and 1C, which is 10 times more current drawing from these batteries. But here again, we had the 20 amp discharge and reached 98 ampere hours. And now with the 6.7 amp discharge, we reached 100 ampere hours. So there could be the Pucot exponent in there as well. 
It definitely makes a tiny bit of a difference, but I doubt we will see 100 ampere hours with this battery here at zero point C, even if we would use this tester here. And as always guys, I will save this graph here on my website. You can just go ahead and download the EB tester software here for free and import all the data for this battery on your computer even without having the actual CKE tester. You don't need the hardware, you just need the software and the data file and then you can import this graph onto your computer. Holding the right mouse button down, it gives you all the information. You can see the voltage, you can see the current at this point of time and the ampere hours we have pulled from this battery at this point of time. So I've now changed the settings here in the tester to charging constant voltage with 5 amps, which is the maximum this tester can do, up to 3.4 volts, and the off cutoff current is 0 amps. I just want to leave it on there for an hour, so, so pump 5-6 ampere hours into this battery, and then we continue our testing anyway. I just don't want to leave it sitting here at these low voltages for too long. You know, everything under 3 volts is a bit... Uh, I wouldn't recommend leaving the battery cells there for too long. I'm not 100% sure why they are not using higher capacity cells in these batteries here. So instead of going with 4 times 100 ampere hour, why are they not going with 4 times 105 ampere hours? See the um, the kelp cells I have here, they are rated at 105 ampere hours here, but I have actually measured them with 107 ampere hours. So there you go, this is a 107 ampere hour battery in regards to a 98 or 100 ampere hour battery here. And you can see the cells will perfectly fit into this case here, no problem at all, including the BMS and some padding, glue, whatever goop they put in these batteries now these days. But this would have perfectly fit. And then you have no trouble reaching the rated 100 ampere hour capacity. And this is exactly what they have done with the 12 volt and 300 ampere hour battery here. These are not 300 ampere hour cells in here. So I think they have paralleled three of these 105. Yeah, I think they have paralleled three of these 105 ampere hour batteries. So all the positives, all the negatives together, and then you get 315 ampere hours for this 3P configuration. And four of these packs in series gets you a 12 volt and 315 ampere hour battery. And, and this is roughly what we have measured with this battery here. And here again, to show you the dimensions, it is not hard to put a, a 12 of these battery cells into this box plus a BMS plus padding and glue and goop and then you reach extraordinary capacities of over 300 ampere hours and guys you make your customers very very happy right and if someone reviews such a battery with 7% or even 10% more capacity than rated well people will buy that because it's good that's what you should do but going very, very close with 100 ampere hours here, I don't, I don't see the point of it. And now oh, it's a bit in the dark here. The, the AO lithium battery here was exceeding the capacity measurement as well, if you can remember that. It's a 100 ampere hour battery, what, but we could pull more capacity from this battery here as well. And this is exactly how it should be. All right, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here on the channel, all your great, fantastic, amazing, generous beer donations. Thank you very much for everyone who is supporting the channel financially as well here. And until the next video, guys, you stay charged, stay safe. And thank you again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. I link this tester down below as well here. If you haven't got one already, you should get one. Amazing stuff comes with a free software here. Great. And I couldn't make a review on these battery cells here because they have got a manufacturer defect. You can see probably here at the corner, the blue heat shrink doesn't go under the top cover here. It just stops there 
and exposes the metal case which is the positive terminal of the whole battery so all these corners here are completely exposed because of this problem even they are really really good cells and measure with over the rated capacity uh, they cannot sell them like this right but yeah I got them for free now and we will use them for a future project for sure